charging you so for Minnesota Wired. Still on uh, having conversation on the opioid crisis uh, within the Somali community in Minneapolis. And today I am here uh, to pick up uh, Yusuf Shafi. Uh, he is the leader of one of, I mean, I think the only organization that is right now uh, dealing with this crisis. The opioid and uh, overdose uh, in Minneapolis. And uh, as a leader, I wanted to hear his take on this issue and um, also just to kind of really open up on, 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 on getting to know what is really going on in the minds of uh, the Somali youth, the parents in the community itself. So we are continuing our conversation on the opioid crisis in Minneapolis and today uh, we are so lucky. Not every day, this is a very busy man, uh, very hard to find, uh, but he's here today. Uh, Yusuf Shafi uh, is one, one leader in the community who is at the front fighting this crisis through his organization, uh, Wellness, and he will tell you more. Alliance Wellness Center. Alliance, well, well, Alliance Wellness Center. Yeah, I want to get that right. That's right. And uh, so Yusuf is here. Yusuf, thank you for joining me today on this yeah. conversation about yeah. the opioid crisis in Minneapolis. Yes. And um, so I, I, I guess, you know, a lot of people have questions. Yes. And um, I, my question to you is what... Tell us a little bit about Alliance Wellness Center first. And, sure. And then we'll go to the next set of questions. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Um, so Alliance Wellness Center was established back in 2015 by by me. Um, I was going through grad school and I noticed uh, that there's a lot of need in our community about mental health and addiction. And I wanted to create something specifically for our community. So we established as an outpatient program back in 2015. And then in 2016, I later added an inpatient uh, Operation with lodging to about six beds, and then we expanded to 24 beds. Uh, we are culture specific. We work predominantly with the East African community, uh, predominantly male, um, and we've also added another program that's the methadone suboxone program as well. In the past couple of years, so we're, you know, we're glad that we're doing the work that we're doing because there's a lot of need in our community, um, and we're happy that you know we're doing the work that we're doing. And how many people do you have? in your staff and also working around Alliance Wellness Center? Um, uh, Client-wise, we have about maybe 45 or so um, for our for our patient and then also our 24-bed lodging. Um, we also have a methadone suboxone program that has over about 150 clients. Um, so in total, I would say about 100 and 145, uh, 150 clients or so. And, and and mostly you said you deal with East African uh, clients yes and um, what inspired you I know you had mentioned just briefly but what was your inspiration I mean, what exactly did you see that you decided okay I'm gonna be part of this and I want to do this sure um, one of the things that motivated me like I said I was going to grad school uh, and I focus specifically on clinical mental health when I was in grad school, I worked at a place called Cool Clinic in South Minneapolis, and I've seen the need and uh, how much need there was with with um, uh, addiction and mental health issues in our community. And I've, oftentimes, we don't address these issues. So that's when I thought about maybe creating something specifically for our people, for us. And that's how Alliance Wellness came about. Um, and we, I established that back in 2015. And uh, that's... You know, just seeing our people and the stigma and there's a lot of shame associated with using alcohol and drugs. I want to sort of change the narrative and I wanted to create a space for people to come in and get help, the help they need. So, in your day-to-day -day activities, mm -hmm. what is it like? Tell me, like, from morning for you and your staff, mm -hmm. what is the day like? You know, sure. Just, you know. There's a lot of chaos working in a treatment center. There's a lot that goes on in the day. You know, I love it. I love what I do. I love my job. Um, so typically, uh, for our residential clients, they usually get up in the morning, like six thirty, seven. Um, they'll get up, brush their teeth, do the hygiene, get ready, eat breakfast, and then they will be transported to the office where they will be doing the treatment. 
So they'll be in group therapy from nine in the morning, and then they get a break you know, for lunch. They get a break between the throughout the day. They eat lunch, and then they go back to group again until three o'clock, three thirty ish. Um, and then they also meet with the counselor one on one to help them with their treatment plan. So their goals could be, you know, um, you know, get off probation. It could be, you know, getting a job, housing, um, doing aftercare. And then the structure is very important. People who struggle with addiction, it's really important for them to have structure. So what Alliance does is provide structure for them. So in the morning when they wake up and the night when they go home, you know, they have chores. Um, you know, they come home around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. They have chores. And then, you know, they do activities like playing basketball, soccer, uh, things like that. So this is really important for them to, to, you know, have sense of community, have a place where they can come, a safe place that can help them deal, you know, in, in the treatment we talk about different topics such as you know prevention uh, we talk about you know finding different coping strategies for a lot of them uh, and teaching them life skills basically is what we do um, and then also therapy we also provide therapy for them individual therapy and group therapy and uh, we cover a variety of different topics so if uh, Somali parents or Oromo parents or uh, parents from East Africa anywhere that has language barriers mm -hmm. You know, and they have a kid with them, or they have an adult, or mm -hmm. anybody with them. Mm -hmm. How is that process like for you guys, and where? Or what do you do? Yeah, um, you know, we try to treat everybody with respect, and you know, if we don't have the answers, we can find you know, you know, places or services that could that could help a person. Uh, our staff speak Somali, um, and you know, also some speak Oromo. We also have, you know, uh, I speak Swahili, even though my, they call me Somali, it's a Jew. Uh, even though <laughs> Not only you, it's a lot of us. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, they have given us that uh, tag. Go yeah, ahead. that tag, Somali, it's a Jew. <laughs> and uh, so my Swahili, I'll say about 50, 60%. So uh, we work with those folks as well. So we just try to meet them where they're at. I think we, we focus at Alliance to make sure that we meet everybody where they're at. And if that's finding someone that can speak their language, then we can make that happen. So what is the biggest obstacle that you guys face when you have a, a new group of people that come here mm -hmm. they're new to the system they're mm -hmm. new to the mm -hmm. how things are done uh, they're new to the healthcare system or the uh, or, or, or even you know they're, they're, they're new mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. they've never had to deal with a child or a family mm -hmm. or a brother or sister mm -hmm. that has addiction problem mm -hmm. what is it for you know how do you guys really help mm -hmm. that process and how do you, do you guys make it easier for them or do you do they find it easy sure well I mean it is it is frustrating it could be stressful to navigate through the system um, you know the person first of all have to have insurance we have to help them to make sure make sure they have insurance uh, and then we have to do a rule 25 assessment so this this process is covered under the healthcare and the yeah, insurance. yeah yeah okay. a lot of it is covered through insurance okay. so if they don't have insurance a lot of them meet criteria for if they're not working or going to school or they don't have a job or then oftentimes go through MA or you know, help them fill out through insurance um, and so we, we educate our folks so education is so important so we educate clients and families about the process uh, we can do this anytime Monday to Friday you can come to Alliance one us there'll be someone that can talk to you about our services and our program and then we just can explain the process to them and getting a rule 25 assessment which is the first step is like a chemical health assessment so sitting down with the person explain to them what you know how long they've been using how much they use where do they live what do they want to get out of treatment, all this. And then based on that assessment, then we can determine the level of care. If they need to go to outpatient or inpatient or maybe, you know, a little bit of both or maybe methadone clinic or suboxone clinic. So depending on what the client needs are, then we can determine. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we just try to do is just educate folks about the, the options they have because it's good to give people options, right? Right, right. It's, um, it's a, yeah, that's for part of, yes. For families, sometimes right. they need just the outpatient. Maybe they need the inpatient. And then based on that, we can determine what, what is a good fit for them. So... Tell me, a, you know, a personal story that you've you've dealt with, yeah. uh, family, someone either you know dying or someone being saved, mm -hmm. or someone you know coming to you and say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you've changed my life, you know. Oh, yeah. If you know any personal stories that you can maybe share, people can know. Yeah. And how did that person come to you, or how did you come to know them? And then you know, if it's success or it's not success, mm -hmm. you can share both if you have an example of that. Yeah, we have a, we have a, I mean uh, we have about. I don't know how many, but we have a lot Alliance alumni program. Uh, in fact, they're going out this Friday, I think, for some some bowling or some activities. So we have, have we have a, about what eight to ten people that went through our program that have graduated, 
that are working now or going to school or you know giving back to society to some extent some of them you know went back to their family houses some of them went back to their moms or dads or husbands or wives houses um, and a lot of them have you know done well and recovery is possible uh, I mean you probably heard the other story or Abdul Rahman yesterday who are, the day before you started, that yeah. event in uh, Minneapolis yeah the event yeah. we did on Friday yes. you heard the other and a couple of other gals that spoke you know talked about their recovery um, and shout out to Generation Hope they're doing some amazing work um, Qadr and Abdul Rahman that are doing some good work um, that are both in recovery two young men that are in recovery that are helping other folks they're helping young people like them uh, you know be in recovery and they're making recovery being something cool and that's what I'm trying to do. So we have plenty of clients that went through our program that have graduated, that are staying sober or doing the right, you know, going to school or work or giving back to society and giving back to their community, which is exactly what we need. Do you know anybody that you've lost or, or people have lost in this fight? Yes. You know, personally or you've seen them or you've met them or they've tried to go through the process. And, and what is it like as in, go ahead, I want you to yeah. answer that question. Yeah, unfortunately, I've lost a couple, I mean, a lot of clients, um, I don't know the exact number, but quite a few, and it's, it's, it feels, you know, it's, it's sad, like, I feel like I, sometimes I feel like I failed, it's not easy mentally, I'll be honest with you, uh, when I hear someone overdoses, overdosed, or um, someone passed away, it just, it just, it just really hurts, you know, and we're doing the best we can, it is, it is a long, you know, it's not a, it's a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. Right. So it's a lot. It, it takes a lot of strength takes, to be takes, in this business and do this, does. see and witness all these things. You it know? does. It is. It is. A, it is a tough business to be in. It's, it's emotionally draining. It's, it's mentally draining. Um, I do work a lot, and uh, when when you lose a child or lose a kid, um, you know it sucks. It really sucks. It's, I mean, it's, it's all for, the it's, it's for everybody. I, it is. It's, uh, I mean, when you have when you hear this conversation, you hear people say. Somebody's gone, you know, and yeah. like you know, that's a kid. You yeah. know, that someone had potential. Yes. Um, to make, you know, to be, uh, and just being someone missing in the community, you know. Yeah. And just being aware of it itself is, is it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I understand that quite very well. Yeah, uh, it's not an easy thing. Working with people, I mean, I. <laughs> you see, you've mentioned that that group that you know is doing that young men who are doing that excellent job. You know, how is your how do you involve the community as well? I mean, is there an outreach? Do you mm -hmm. want people to volunteer? Do you, do you let people come in and say, I want to be a role model, I want to, hey, I want to support this kid, I want to sit down with this kid, I want to have conversation with the kid, especially from people that are successful in our community, you know, people like doctors, nurses, you know, people that can just be like, hey, you can be anything. Or people that have gone through the addiction themselves and have become very successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there opportunity for that? And if there is, you want to share that with people? And, yeah, I mean, like I was like a new... Mentor know, program or yeah. mental help or mental support or something like that. Yeah, well, we need a lot of young folks to be in this field. So if you're going to school, um, if you want to be in social work or mental health or addiction field, we need you more than more than ever because a lot of our young folks are struggling. We need people that look like them that represent them. Um, that's number one. If you are successful, if you're an attorney or a doctor or a nurse, you can always reach out to come and volunteer and help us out. We do a lot of events, community events. In fact, we did one last Friday, ending the stigma event. Excellent, you, excellent. You, I was there. I was there. Yeah. I was. It was. It was. This. This. A lot of people showed up. And yeah. It was just. You know. We had these old testimonies from ki from the kids mm -hmm. that had this issue of addiction and their parents and the community and supporters. It was, it was. It was a powerful event to be in. And Thank I'm you. glad I brought my son along with me. Absolutely. To be a part of that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and no, that's what we try to do. We just educate. I think education is so important. You know, we have a long way to go. I think it's important. The more we educate folks, the more we do prevention, and we we talk to these things about these kids about about drugs and what they look like. Because let's be honest, when we're 12, 13, 14, we are kind of curious, right? Right. And in our community, we don't do a good job with prevention. We're more like when something bad happens, everybody kind of reacts instead of doing, you know, preventing things. And and that's the frustrating part. So. I guess I'm trying to change that and see ways we can help and just educate more young folks. Speaking of that, and from last week, you, that the event you have, you does, mm -hmm. the, you did. Mm -hmm. I have an acronym here, by the way. Can Yo. you pick that up? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I, you told me to bring this close to me. Someone yes. might need it. So we give you. A can you show people what, yeah. what they yeah, need? Yeah, yeah. So we give you Alliance Wellness goodie bag. So 
this is Narcan um, and this was donated by the Steve Rumlas Hope Network so shout out to them uh, for giving us some Narcans and there are two Narcans in here and if you have someone who's experienced an overdose or uh, when you take opioids one of the things that happens to you is you just basically stop breathing um, and so you can use this uh, at any time and so if you feel like someone is, is basically an overdosing or experiencing an overdose uh, you can give a shout out naloxone, naloxone Narcan to them and it's pretty simple it's easy to use and there's instruction that comes with this let me open this it literally tells tells you what to do um, and how to use naloxone there's uh, nine steps eight steps and it literally um, tells you to how to use it uh, to some extent so um, so if someone is having a hard time breathing uh, you basically can tell by if they gasp for air or if they are you know pale or you know if they have a slow heartbeat you can kind of you can figure out when someone is struggling and then you can call 911 and try to open their airways and do some rescue breathing um, and then you could sort of give them the medication the naloxone there's a <clears throat> there is a gloves and, and and syringe in here so you could use a syringe and use the medication and sort of inject it um, inject the naloxone um, and, and, and making sure that you know you do it on like a shoulder or a buttock, uh, buttock buttocks is that what's called? buttocks yeah. buttocks there's a way to say it with these yeah. Americans and British yeah yeah, yeah they yeah. say it buttocks. differently buttocks buttocks, on buttocks and, yeah you know yeah, yeah, but yeah. butt cheeks is okay yeah, yeah, butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah exactly you put it in the butt cheeks exactly yes. you can put it in the butt cheeks yeah. um, inject it on the butt inject it yeah on, yes. on the muscle yeah yes. Yes. and so it's important that you do that and then hopefully help will arrive by then and that person usually will be transported to a hospital where they could monitor them and, and, and do things like that so yeah, I think it's important that that we understand how to use these things. I it's think. very, it's. I mean, it's, it was very educational to be at the event and just to see, you know, someone explain it how to use to use this. I got this from the event. Um, it could be a lifesaver, you know, part time. I am an Uber driver, so anytime I could see this in the streets of Minneapolis and maybe I can be of help. Mm -hmm. So I am learning how to use this when I'm. Uh, on my own online absolutely you know I mean um, you could be in a gas station you'd be seeing right. someone who could overdose right. and you could help them right you know um, and and you it's keep one in your car keep right. one at home at right. all times right and, and then anything can happen what else is in the and then we so. also have a community education um, so we're doing a community education about mental health um, how to seek help if you're struggling with a son or daughter who are struggling uh, but yet they're not ready to get you know they're still struggling and in denial so we're teaching the parents what are some ways that we could help that person? Yeah, that's uh, that's very important that you mentioned that. Yeah. What's that process like? Because that's, I think it's something that, you know, a lot of parents, at the, even at the events, mm -hmm. there's a huge disconnect, you say. Yes, You know, is. there's a yeah. huge connection between the parents and the Somali uh, born, uh, the, on the kids who came here and grew mm -hmm. up here in this system. There's a huge disconnect. And the parents sometimes don't know what's wrong with their kids. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and the kids don't want to really... Mm -hmm. give that information out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, either they're embarrassed or they don't feel it's a letdown mm -hmm. or it's a, it's a problem that they're personally dealing with and they mm -hmm. don't want to really talk about it mm -hmm. so how is that please can you that's very important I think. yeah I mean I mean let's be honest like if, if, if five of your family members came to you and you were struggling with addiction and you said hey Yusuf I think you got a problem with alcohol or drugs and the first response will be like no I have no problem let's be honest Denial. Um, yeah, and, and, and it's hard for people to admit that there's issues, you know. And sometimes it might take them a while. It might, it might take them a while. Um, I think it's important that we don't give up on a person. Because, you know, recovery is, this is a disease, right? And the disease is, it's just like anybody, if someone was struggling with, you know, had diabetes and, you know, um, if they stop eating healthier and exercise, you're not, you're not going to just throw them out and kick them out. Don't, take your, don't kick your kids out. Because especially the girls, and when you do that, kids get introduced to more things, and that creates more problem, right? So it's important for you to just be patient. Uh, it's important for you to bring them to a place like Alliance, or it doesn't have to be an Alliance. It could be anywhere else. Bring them to a place where someone, a counselor, someone can maybe can talk to them. Um, we have peer support that you know that help these kids, um, and and someone young, someone that understands their language, someone they can trust. Um, they might be open up and say, yeah, maybe I am struggling with this, but. 
No, it, it takes a little while. The thing about addiction is you can never hide it. Right, it comes right. out one way. So, what are the other. signs that parents look at, like a parent? I'm a father yeah. of uh, four. Mm -hmm. They're young now. Mm -hmm. But um, what are the signs that you look for when someone is struggling, like struggling with addiction? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of obvious. You could tell. Uh, let's say if your son or daughter was coming home, you know, coming home late, uh, you could smell. And sometimes if someone is smoking marijuana or, you know, or, or smoking even the uh, the pills like opioids they, they smells you know, you, could, you could tell the smell uh, they might come home late they might be with a whole different crowd different friends if they're lying to you a lot if they're always in a rush like they always have to go somewhere um, if they're always you know making up you know stories about being here being there like if they stop working or going to school all these things are signs and symptoms of someone struggling with addiction. Sometimes they kind of leave stuff in the bathroom or they leave, leave stuff something in the bathroom, in the bedroom, like the needle, bedroom, needles and stuff like you know, that. Or plastic things, plastic, or snorting. Yep, tin, yep you know, exactly. Um, exactly. And, you know, do those specific, are they specific things like those plastics for snorting? Are they like, or any plastic can do? Even one yeah. from McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. yeah you, can, you can use a straw, I mean, straw, yeah. to, to snort him and you don't need, yeah. A lot of different things. So it would be very weird if you next day you went to your child's room mm -hmm. and you saw a lot of mm -hmm. straw that are yes. dirty looking and yep. you know, or you see a lot of syringes and you're like, what's going on? Or yep. maybe you're doing the laundry and you see something and you're like, huh, yep. what is Some, going on? Something, here? yeah. That's you, something you should be maybe uh, that's a step to ask a question, you know? Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Hey, what is this for? You exactly. Know? And be friends with your kids, right? Yeah. Like it's important for us to like, most of the times. If they feel like you're not judging them or you're not gonna do anything, you know, in our community, you know how we are. Very. Um, it's important for us to be friends with our kids because if you're friends with your kids, they will tell you. Every, these kids are very honest. They will tell you most of the time. They will tell you the right things. Um, if if you're honest with them and they trust you, you know. But if you're, they got ups and or they shy, you know, right. like are they're afraid of you, then they're not gonna tell you, of course. Do you, you know, do you deal with the culture of Paris, uh, where, as a community, you know, we like to. We don't want like people talking about our kids. We don't want like to talk about our kids' problem to other people, and we feel like it's a letdown. The community is gonna look down upon you in a negative way and say, "Look at you," mm -hmm. you know. Uh, or people, mostly people, consider it as a curse, you yeah. know, from another the other generation. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, grandfather or father cursed that family or something like that. Do you deal with that? And you know, yeah. how, how does that go? Now, how do you, and how do you go over, get over that, and explain to them? Sure. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Unfortunately, that happens. You know, we, we, you know, people. We're very prideful people. We have a lot of egos. You know, and sometimes we really care about what other people say about us and our family name and this and that. We're and sensitive we're, about. We are. Yeah. We are. So, I mean, there are people that don't want their son or daughter to be seen in a treatment center, which I understand. But this is life and death, you know, situation. So who cares what so and so? It's about saving someone's life. It's about saving your son or your daughter's life. So, I would recommend for people to just not listen to that and just see ways you can be get your son or daughter some help. Is that, and, and do you sit with them and explain that process to them? I do, I do. Okay, and be like, there's I, nothing to be ashamed of, for yeah, example. Okay? Yeah, and we make it, we, we normalize it. Because, you know, the more we normalize these things, and, and, I mean, addiction is just like any other disease, right? Yes. If someone, like I said, that I use the example of someone with diabetes or hypertension or high blood pressure, we actually, in our community, we feel bad for them. We're like, oh, so could I let I, could I let I, but we feel bad for you. But then, if someone's wrong with addiction, it's like, no, 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 I don't want to talk about that, which is really. But the, so, because they don't know, it's it's a, it's, it's a it's a disease as well. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a, it's a mental health is a, is a, is an issue, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of people don't understand what that is, and and that's frustrating at times because we're so ignorant at times. And I think we need to be mindful of that and, and change that mindset. The good thing is, there's a lot of young people that are educated that are understand these things, and, and that really helps a lot you know because in the next 20 years things might be different i know you're a person of faith i'm a person of faith yes. you know we we love we love our faith mm -hmm. and it's like any other community the mm -hmm. process of healing includes faith mm -hmm. but you also get where people parents tell you oh I, i'll read quran on him and he'll yep. be fine yep. <laughs> yes and, and how do you deal with that i i'll tell them yeah quran is good but also therapy works Right. So why not do both, right? Right. You can do your Quran Sada, you can do therapy. Right. And they both can help other person. So, and the people that don't know that it's like with any faith, they people think some of this issue is a is a possession and it's an evil possession. Mm -hmm. uh, 
or uh, like I said a curse and so there's a process of uh, religion that comes into it faith as a part of that healing and where uh, religious leaders are called and they read the Quran on the individual maybe they get better which you know you know uh, it's a healing itself you know just having a belief in something it's healing you know but there's also another aspect of healing as well which is your kind of job comes here, you know and you're saying that they should be a combination of both absolutely we should do both uh, absolutely I think that's 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 something that is I think has been going on not only here but uh, back home a lot you know mm -hmm. um, we've seen issues of how people deal with people that have mental health issues mm -hmm. you know uh, you know there's no treatment there is no uh, you know places where they can take them usually because of lack of resources mm -hmm. uh, lack of money lack of funding mm -hmm. but here is different so can you tell me that that you know support that you're getting either from the state or, or from the community or from businesses how is that um, to you i think i've been a lot of support you know this is, is it's a lot of work it's hard work you know it's mentally draining like i said it's physically draining you know mentally draining um and sometimes you just come home tired and uh, but I, for the most part, I think I get a lot of support from a lot of different people. Uh, and I appreciate all of them because sometimes those things are things that motivate us to just keep working. But some days are not good days. Some days are bad days. You know, some days are great days when clients graduate and they get their own apartment and or they back to school or they work, you know, they get married. Those things are really, you know, amazing. Uh, but some days when someone overdoses or someone relapses or, you know, it's hard days, you know. It's, it's, it's a lot of also people work that's involved. Um, you're working with a lot of different different people, different different personalities, different characters. It's hard. It's not not an easy easy gig. Do you think the fight against the opioid crisis and drug overdose? You think we as a community from East Africa? Do you think we are not? Even, are we united in this fight? Well, I'm not sure. I know. I know. <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, as a lot, a lot of the parents, like the alliance, the work that we do, alliance. I feel, I feel we have a good team. I feel like um, we have a lot of support. Um, I feel like I personally work with other treatment centers as well that are that are just not just Teen Challenge, New Way, a lot of different other programs that are have you know hundred beds and stuff. We work with them as well. Um, yeah, I think I think we're doing okay, um, and I feel like you know we need. We need um, sort of we need to change the mindset of how we think about opioids um, because this can happen to anybody. It can happen to your son. It can happen to your daughter. It can happen to anyone. And uh, I think it's important that we we change our mindset of how we deal with it. So I was talking to Hassanin the other day. And, Shout uh, out to Hassanin, by the way. Yeah. Great guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was talking to Hassanin, and one of the conversations we heard. Was the foundation that was put in place 20 years ago okay. wasn't adequate um, and do you think that we need to put those foundations now so the next 10 years 20 years from now because uh, really we are part of this community and we're growing uh -huh. and, and addiction and drug and all these things then they're not gonna go away sure so what do you think we should have what should we have in place to deal with those you know future things that might come up and happen in our community like this crisis now of overdose and all that yeah, I think the most important thing is we need to end stigma now because if people are, you know, sort of stigmatized in our community, of course they're not going to get the help they need. So I think it's important that we get them the right help right away. And by that... It's okay. Hassan was yawning too, so I guess it's oh, really? you, you it's can't... an evening thing. So oh, I'm man. Gonna, don't worry about it. I usually have coffee before I come, but that's okay. Man, that's okay I know bro. it's a long day for you. Yeah, you I got up at 6 this morning. I now. understand. I understand. Um, in. So I, th I think the most important thing is just educating people about, you know, what these issues are and just trying to get more people help because if, if people are stigmatized about it, then they're not going to seek the help they need and that creates more issues and we're going to lose a lot young, more young people. It's important for us not to lose a lot of young people. It's important for us to get them the help they need. You know, we need detox center. We need, you know, we need programs with the school programs. We need the families to get involved with their kids. Um, we need them to be more involved. And by involved, I'm not meaning buying them basketball shoes and send them to the YMCA for four hours. That's not what I mean. I mean being actually being there with them, 
and say, hey, how was your day today? Who did you talk to? Did anyone bully your school? And a lot of these kids are, you know, young black male, you know, it's not a good fun time to be a black man in America. Um, and, you know, anyone bullying you at home or your school or whatever, or your siblings or your neighbors, like those things are important. You know, we have to hug our kids, we have to kiss our kids. We're not very affectionate in our community, you know. Um, yeah, it's true, like we kind of are distance with our kids. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I grew up, uh, you know, in a home that, you know, that, you know, my father probably didn't know much yeah. uh, about all about all of his kids you know mm -hmm. but i know he was a good dad mm -hmm. you know i know he did the basics in providing for us mm -hmm. but you know it wasn't something like lovey lovey you know mm -hmm. hey mm -hmm. you know how was your day let me give you i love you you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's, it was a, it's a different world yeah. you know mm -hmm. you know our parents come from a different part of yeah. the world yeah you know a different generation that they you know mm -hmm. did things differently you know Absolutely. um <clears throat> which is which is a very good point that you make you yeah. know yeah. um it's an excellent point that you make because you don't you. you don't get to you know in our community it's true you know especially the older generation to the younger ones they don't they don't play those games no, so they don't you know actually they very much stay away from that's true e expressing themselves you know a lot, eh? showing Absolutely. showing that affection and then that goes back to you know even our mothers mm. you know Somali culture itself you know mm. it's like you know there's this guys or boys are more emasculated then you know what I mean mm -hmm. uh, you're already told where you belong that you're a lion mm -hmm. that you're a brave mm -hmm. that uh, you know you can fight you, you know fight other people and you mm -hmm. you come up you know what I mean mm -hmm. is this you know idea that is given to you know young men about mm -hmm. how you know you know emasculated you know mm -hmm. maybe more powerful mm -hmm. and you know what I mean yeah. um, uh, yeah, even like the idea of not showing emotion. Right, right. Like, you, you know, you, why are you crying? Yeah, you, you know, you're, 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 you're being know. a whimper. You're yes. a woman, like you right. Know. Are you you're a, a woman? Punk. You know what I mean? Are yeah. you a punk? You know, yeah. those and and you know, I mean, and women, got, women are very strong in our community. Like, right. Shout out to all the moms. Oh yeah. Shout out to very all the women. Very powerful women. They're doing uh, very all, powerful. All they doing, they doing everything. The Somali women, Somali, are, women. Somali women are killing. They're winning. One hundred percent. Shout out to our Somali sisters. You know, the mothers and the sisters are doing amazing. They are. They are amazing. They are. Uh, they are the ones that are really uh, holding us up, you know, Absolutely. especially in the Somali American and uh, even Somali general all over the world. You Absolutely. Know? See, my mother, uh, when I was young, growing up, my mother was basically had her own business mm. outside with no roof, you know, mm -hmm. and that's part of the motivation and you know, mm. the strength that we get to do what we do most of the time. Absolutely. That comes from them. Absolutely. Um, Yusuf, I, I know. You know, sometimes there's a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there could be also be obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end, man, when you come home, what do you say to yourself? Like when you you're just sitting and now you've decompressed, mm -hmm. you're sitting in your sofa, you're just chilling. I mean, what do you say to yourself? Like. Man. Oh, I gotta send that email to that PO. <laughs> I got to email that PO back. Or you say, man, it's been a long day. Or you say, man, so and so graduated, and I'm so proud of them. So it depends on the day. Like I said, there's some good days and some bad days. Um, you know, it is, it is, it is. I love, I genuinely love what I do. And that's the human you part know? of it. You know, yeah. that's what I'm, yeah. I'm driving at. The human yeah. part of, yeah. you know, um, putting yourself out there. You know. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you still gotta go, come home to your to yeah. your child, yes. to your wife, yes. to your family. You know, yes. uh, having shout out to my wife, by the way. We have here, yes. amazing thank you. lady, thank amazing you, lady, amazing yes. lady, yes. Lady. Yes. amazing lady. Um, so it's 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 not easy. You know? It's not. It's not easy. Yeah? It's not. A lot of people. And so when you when, when I'm just letting people yeah. know, with yeah. knowing that yeah. there's still people out there that will criticize you. Yeah, I mean, and by the way, my phone is on until ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. You know. Oh, 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 oh,